Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here in the ACI Spring Convention uh, and presenting the research that we have been conducting along with Professor Hong under the title, Use of Steel Microfibers, Steel Macrofibers, PVA Fibers, and Hybrid Fibers in UHPC. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about the experience that we have had from a cheer test and bond strength test of UHPC beams. Um, so ACI Committee 239 suggests that you need to have some fiber reinforcement to achieve some specific tensile ductility or uh, to achieve strain hardening behavior during the post uh, cracking region. In the last three decades, in the technical literature about uh, the beams that be, have been tested under shear, most of these beams uh, have been using steel microfibers. And, and this might be because of maybe one of these of two reasons. And one I think is maybe the presence of fibers disturbs the UHPC's microstructure and therefore having a smaller fiber might make more sense. Another reason might be that the distribution of steel microfibers is statistically more uniform when compared to other types of fibers. However, there are many studies uh, that have been conducted using other types of fibers from FRC, from the experience from FRC, but they haven't been done to UHPC beams. So that's what we want to explore today. Um, so what ACI 544 considers as a limit separating macrofibers and microfibers is 0 0.3 millimeters. And using that limit, we're gonna use, uh, in, in, in this presentation, I'm gonna use I'm gonna consider microfibers, the ones that are having a diameter of 0 0.22 millimeters. And I'm also gonna use, uh, I'm gonna show some beams that had PVA microfibers using 0 0.38 uh, millimeters. And then the typical um, fibers that have been used for FRC, that is uh, the hook and steel fiber having a, di a diameter of 0 0.38 millimeters and also the double hook end steel uh, that has a 0 0.9 millimeters diameter. I need to emphasize that these type of fibers are the ones that use that were highly used in FRC. And the thing is, they are cheaper than the microfibers, and also they are easier to work with them uh, when, when they are being placed. But we need to see how, what are the benefits that they can provide to shear behavior. So in here, I'm showing the mixing UHPC using the steel microfibers. We're using a, a 2% uh, steel microfibers, and it's easy to see that we have very good consistency. The material flows uh, without any problem. It has self-consolidating uh, properties, and we can achieve with this type of fiber a uh, uniform distribution of fibers. We have slumps uh, higher than 60 centimeters, and we have compressive strengths between 120 to 160 MPAs when we are using uh, at least a volume fraction of 0.75%. But when we use the same matrix and we change, we use uh, we change the type of fiber and we use, for example, the double hook and microfibers, things don't go out exactly as we expected. We have some fiber volume. And this is something that you want to avoid when you're using UHPC. Similar things were obtained when we used the hook and steel microfibers. We still have uh, some, um, we still have some um, fiber balling. And in the case of the PVA fibers, we have some, the material is too sticky. So we wanted to increase the slump. And in here, what we're seeing is uh, uh, a mix after we adjust the SP content. Now this, comes from, from one slide to another, but the, to get this value, it actually, we require a lot of uh, preliminary tests, adjusting our mixing process. And in the way that we were adjusting it is that we, we changed the way, that the sequence of our, our, the way that we added the SP content. So instead of adding the SP content in the end or, or separating the SP content with the water, we decided to, to put the SP content, the, the, all the SP, with 75% of the water. And we added this in three stages. And then in the fourth stage, we added the water, the remaining 25% of the water, but this remaining 25%, it was just to adjust the, the viscosity or, 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 the, or the consistency of the material so we can have a workable material. And we achieved slumps from 35 to 40 centimeters. 
we can see that we can have good workability and it was easy to place on the, on the beams, although these beams had a 7.6% reinforcement ratio, uh, still reinforcement ratio. And then the same, the same well, better benefits we obtained with, uh, with this mix when we had um, uh, PVA fiber, we are using 2.25% of PVA fiber and we can obtain slumps from 40 to 45 centimeters, which is more than we the, what we obtained for the uh, double hook and steel fibers. And placing PVA fiber is really easy in the, in the large beam specimens. However, fabricating the cylinders or fabricating the dog bones is not that simple. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of expertise because the fiber, the finishing of this type of fiber is really hard. So especially if you are using a 2.25%, which is a, a I, I would consider a high volume fraction for UHPC. Now, when we make some uh, combinations of fibers, in this case, we have two macro fibers at the same volume fraction, and we are having a total volume fraction of 1.5%. We have some reduction in slump, but the material was was workable when we put them on the on the on the beams. So we consider that that was fine. And increasing the volume fraction of the long steel fiber and and having a total volume fraction of 2.25 percent, we were able to increase the slump to 35 to 40 centimeters. That is an increase from when compared to the 1.5 percent of steel fibers. And the way that we mix these, these hybrid fibers is that after we have a good consistency with, uh, with a UHPC matrix, then we add the chores to the fiber first, we observe until it has evenly been distributed, and then we add the, the long steel fiber so we can have a, a better dispersion among the fibers. And then, um, and then this is what you are going to observe from a hybrid fiber having 2.25% of, of hybrid fibers and uh, I think uh, we obtain a, a good uh, consistency and we observe here the, the slump test showing that uh, slump that I am showing in the, in the figure in the left. And when we increase, in, in, in our case, we increase the, the volume fraction of the short steel fiber and we reduce the volume fraction of the long steel fiber still having 2.25% in total we were able to achieve higher slump capacity, uh, higher slump, and then we had good workability. As I, as I said before, the reinforcement bars that we have here are 7.6%, which is a very high reinforcement ratio, but the, the bars, uh, sorry, the, the UHPC matrix with this type of fiber was easy to flow in this uh, heavy congested um, reinforcement configuration. So when we, have, when we had uh, one experiment trying three types of fibers, uh, the first two fibers, we mix them as, as I showed you before in, in the previous video, the, the, the steel fibers. And then in the end, after the steel fibers have been evenly distributed in the matrix, we added the 0.75% of PVA fiber. And um, we can see here the consistency that, that was obtained for this material. Using this vibrator seems completely redundant or useless because the material flows by itself. It has self-consolidating uh, properties, but our students sometimes they will still like to use the vibrators. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna talk about what was the experience of the UHPC beams. And the idea behind having um, fiber reinforced concrete or, or UHPC with fibers, is that when in specimens that we don't, we don't have stirrups is that we have some contribution for the compression zone. And then we have some contribution for the, from the double action. And the key part is the contribution that you have along the crack that is uh, along the diagonal crack that is uh, where the fibers are effective. Now, the idea of having these hybrid fibers is that you can generate an effective net reinforcement that you can arrest the, the, the growth of microcracking, that means increasing the, the cracking capacity. And also, so that's why you require some uh, microfibers and also using some macrofibers to, to reducing the crack opening and also to reducing, to increasing the, the toughness of the material. 
So in here, I'm showing a picture of a beam that, that had no fibers. And we can observe, this, this is a deep beam having an age ratio of 1.5. And we can observe that um, these beams had some uh, concrete crushing. When we, uh, when we compare this beam with the beam that has 2.25% uh, loss of fiber, we can observe that instead of having multiple cracks, we have some localization in one single crack. And we can observe that the crack um, of the, of the long steel fibers uh, increases, um, sorry, not increases. Uh, it has some, some sort of pull up behavior, but in the case of, of the, but we don't see any spalling in, in, this, in this, or not significant spalling in this beam. However, in the, in the beam that had 2.25% uh, PVA fiber, we were, we were not able to notice any spalling and the cracks widths were, um, were reduced. When we compare this to the UFC beams that had hybrid fibers, we can, these beams of, of course ob uh, obtain higher shear capacity than the monofibers. And in these beams, we observe that the cracks are reduced significantly. And, um, and also in the case of the UHPC beam that had the three types of fibers, we can see minor cracks. And, and that's, that's, that's good. We have good performance on that. Now, in, we also tested some slender beams having an age ratio of 3.3. Uh, in here, we can observe the multiple cracks in the beam that had no fibers. Now, when we included fibers to these type of beams, in here is where the, where the fibers contribution increases. Like in, in deep beams, we have some uh, arcing action in which the strut the strut is of the UHPC is very strong. That means that having fibers is, is helpful, but it is more effective when we have slender beams because different types of fibers will have different type of response. In this case, when we have lungs to fiber, we have a huge or, or an, an increased pull out behavior in, along the crack um, of the diagonal uh, crack. And in the case of the PVA fiber, we see that it is different from the the failure pattern is different from the ones that had uh, steel fibers because the, this type of fiber will try to propagate the, the fibers along the shear span instead of localizing it in one single uh, in one single crack. Of course, it will have, and in the end, we will have a crack that uh, governs the, the failure pattern. But we can see that the failure pattern, it's different from the one of the steel fibers. Now, in here, I have two pictures that are very interesting. One is a beam that has a 0.75 short steel fiber and 1.5% long steel fiber. And in this beam, we don't see any, any, um, any shear, shear cracks. We see actually some flexural cracks. And I'm gonna come back to this beam in a moment. And here we observe the beam that had three types of fibers. And we observe that this beam had um, very uh, narrow cracks and no spalling. Now, this beam, the one that failed in, shear, in, in flexor, it's interesting to note that uh, this beam had uh, some heavy reinforcement on, on this side, maybe 10 centimeters separated. On the other side, we don't have any, any um, shear reinforcement except the fibers, which is in, in all the beams. And we can observe that having a proper combination, in this graph, we can observe that having a proper combination of fiber reinforcement can change the failure mode from shear failure to flexural failure in a beam that had a, a very high uh, steel reinforcement ratio of 7.6%. And answering the question, can we use other types of fibers as, as shear reinforcement? For the case of the, of the deep beams, I can see that deep beams uh, that we tested all had um, all the fiber reinforced deep beams that we had had a shear capacity higher than 0 0.83 MPA or higher than 10 MPA, 10 PSI, which is, uh, and, at, and at this point, we didn't observe any, any um, concrete crushing or any spalling. And we are saying that if you have hybrid fibers, you can guarantee that you can get at least twice the capacity of the beam that has um, no fibers. And I need to emphasize that in deep beams, usually we will have a, a very high concrete um, strut uh, contribution. That means that increasing the capacity of, of, the, of the deep beams only by using fibers 
it's actually something that is worth exploring. And then in the slender beams, we were able to obtain uh, shear capacities larger than 0 0.5 MPa. And we can notice that these beams had a, a for example, the beam that had no fibers had a, a, a high capacity of what has been reported for ACI 318, uh, 0 0.17 MPa. And we can gain, if you have uh, hybrid fibers, we can gain almost four times that capacity. So this slide is here for us to, to, so to be an evidence that we can have some uh, fiber reinforcement different from the short steel fibers, and we can still have a very good performances on the, on the shear response. But we do have some experiences that are maybe not successful, and, uh, and they are not successful not because um, there is some error, but because UHPC is just a, a very good material. And the, the thing that is not successful is that we just require more experimenting instead of just, it, it exceeded our expectations. So now we need to do more testing. But right now I'm gonna show you the points until we are right now. Uh, so it's, this is an experience in bond strength and splicing length of rebars in UHPC. So the development length of the reinforcement is stipulated by ACI 318 has an upper limit of the compressive strength up to 70 MPa. Now, this limit is of course very conservative for the standing properties exhibited by UHPC. And this gets even worse if we have high, high strength steel rebars that have a very uh, small ribs. And these are threaded bars and we are using bars number five and they are of uh, grade 120 and bars number eight using uh, of grade 100. And we fabricated these beams using the we using a, a UHPC reinforced with two percent steel microfiber. So we started first with a fiber that we are used to, and then we were trying to explore other types of fiber. But at this point, we got some um, some experiments. So in in here, we tried to to figure out the we were trying to quantify. The, how was the capacity when we used 44 times the, the diameter, the bar diameter, or 32 times or 19 times for bar number five, and similar numbers for bar number eight. If we use ACI's equation, having a limited uh, compressive strength of, of 70 MPa, you can see that our, what we are proposing our, as our splicing lens would be 74% of, of what ACI is saying. Now, if we use the real compressive strength that we had uh, that we obtained from our material, we can we can see that these values make more sense with what ACI is suggesting. The issue was that when we had some um, some when we did the test, and here we can, you guys can see the side view and also the bottom view, we can see that in bars number five we obtained many uh, flexural cracks. And bars number eight, we also obtain flexural cracks. So in some slabs, slices, we fail to allow the UHPC beams to fail in bond failure. This is because of the very high uh, strength of UHPC. And none of these, bar, none of these beams uh, had a splitting cracks. They all had uh, flexural cracks and we, and we saw that the tension reinforcement yielded before failure. And this is why UHPC can become an obstacle in research. And this obstacle is not that it's bad, it's just that we require more testing. And um, because we, we found that, for example, in this case of bonds, bonds and, and splice length tests, we obtain, we only use 40% of what ACI is required for normal concrete, and we obtain flexural capacity developed by reinforcement bars, prevented the bond failure. So that's all from my side. Uh, I just want to acknowledge our sponsors and thank you. If there are any questions, I would like to address them.